Good morning, YouTube. I got a good one for you today. We are going to be making sauteed butternut squash in brown butter with toasted uh, almonds, garlic, and the other thing, fresh sage. <laughs> Y'all, this stuff is stupid good and it tastes like a holiday. Makes your whole house smell amazing. And I can't get enough. Mm. Yeah. All right, so we're making butternut squash. Love this stuff. Now, typically I buy whole butternut squash. This is not that, obviously. This comes in a little container. It's already been cut up and cubed for you. Honestly, this costs a lot more. You can get a regular whole butternut squash that has about three times this amount. This is not quite a pound, but a three pound butternut squash for about two bucks. This was $2.99 just for 13 ounces. Why they made it 13 ounces, I have no idea, but they did. So typically I buy the whole squash. However, just recently it has been just me or just me and Boone for lunch pretty often. A tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And I've really, with some of the children now being in college, some, not all, but some, I no longer cook quite such monstrous volumes of food as I used to, because I was cooking for 10 or 12 every day, and I noticed I'd gotten to the point where I was starting to throw out produce. So I absolutely don't think that's acceptable. So I thought, well, I'm gonna experiment a little bit, see what I can do. This doesn't save money, but it saves food. Now, if you're more thoughtful, then yes, of course, buy the whole one, make it two or three different meals, much, much better. But I'm going out of town, so meh. Way too much about my life and lack of planning. All right, so two teaspoons of butter, tablespoon and a half of olive oil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna make the stuff that we're gonna put on top of the butternut squash. So to this, relatively low heat. It's, it's not quite medium, but I wanna keep it to the low end. I have three big fat cloves of garlic that I sliced. Okay, and I do want those kind of in a single layer, just like that. We're going to let this toast, we're going to bloom those flavors, and then this is just half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. You can add this at the end, however, I want to perfume and to heat the butter and oil. And if I put it in here while the garlic is cooking, you'll get a more rounded, roasty heat from it, which I think is really nice, okay? Now, right here, I have two ounces of sliced almonds. You can go to the big box store. You can buy a three pound bag, three or five, three or five pound bag of this for 10 bucks. If you compare this, buying it in the big container at the big box store to like the little eight ounce package at the grocery, you're getting like an order of 10 to 15 times more almonds this way, okay? Buy them, divide them up into little bags, stash them in the fridge, or not the fridge, the freezer. There you go, boom, perfect. All right, you see how our butter and oil is starting to sizzle? We're gonna give it just a sprinkle of salt. We're gonna let this sit, okay? The reason we're letting this sit, we want our garlic to get nice and golden and brown. We don't wanna add our garlic and our butternut at the same time. This butternut squash takes far longer to cook than the garlic does. So if we try to cook them all together in the same pan, you're gonna get burned garlic. That's not fun. So we're gonna cook our garlic just to the point of doneness. We're gonna scoop it out and then in the same oil and butter that has already been flavored and perfumed with garlic, then we're gonna cook our butternut. All right, Boonie, right over here, I have fresh sage. This stuff, oh man, you, you like some, I know, it's the most amazing fragrant stuff. I love it with sweet potatoes, and butternut squash, <clears throat> pumpkin, you name it. So this was just one big fat sprig, and I pulled the leaves off of the stems, and I just stacked them one on top of each other, and just running through to make these little ribbons. Technically speaking, that's a chiffonade. Nobody cares. 
pounds. <laughs> it is kind of useful when you're dealing with fresh herbs or if you're dealing with uh, kale or collards or turnip greens or what have you and you're, you're cutting those and washing them and getting them clean and then you want to run your knife through and you'll get these beautiful little ribbons. There. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna, oh, see, look, these are already starting to get toasty. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna give it just a couple minutes. We're gonna let everybody get nice and golden and then we'll be back for the next step. There go. All right, you see how beautiful that is? Perfect, you don't wanna let it go any farther than that. I also pulled out most of the red pepper because the red pepper will also burn. But now our butter and garlic, or olive oils taste like the garlic and red pepper. All right, so to this, now we're gonna add our almonds. They also cook at a slightly different time than the garlic and red pepper. They also will burn if you're not careful. So all we're doing here is giving our almonds just a couple minutes. We're gonna get these nice and toasty. And again, we'll be right back. Okay, so this is where we gotta be careful. I'm turning that off for just a minute. See how nice and brown our garlic is? I mean, not our garlic, what is this one? Almonds. Almonds, thank you. See how brown our almonds are. I'm getting a different hole to put them in. Be careful because at this point you can go from nice brown toasty almonds to very burnt and it burnt, you've screwed up. Not that I have ever done such a thing as that. <laughs> but trust me when I tell you, you can't save it at that point. Especially if you scorch garlic. Burnt garlic, mm -mm. Now, look at the color of the butter that's in here. See that brown butter? That just means we have browned the milk solids that are in the butter. That stuff is gold. All right, we don't have quite enough butter in here to do the rest of this. So I've just got like a teaspoon and a half I'm adding to our pan. Turning the heat back on medium low. And we are adding our butternut squash. Now the butternut squash, I... Yeah, okay, so my phone rang, sorry. <laughs> butternut squash will take about 15 minutes to cook all the way through. So what we're gonna do is stir it around and make sure that we got nice buttery, goodness on all sides of our garlic. Um, no, butternut squash. Why I can't get anything to come out right to the camera? I wanted to call everything garlic. Holy cow. Okay. So, there we go. Nice and buttery. And we're going to give this a nice healthy pinch of kosher salt. Did I already salt the butternut squash? I don't know. I don't either. I guess we're going to salt it lightly this time and taste it later and figure out. <laughs> we will decide at that point. Hey, when I get interrupted in the middle of like that part of the dish, there's no telling what I'm gonna end up with. All right, we're gonna let this go for about 15 minutes. Now, the only tricky thing I'm gonna do is find a lid that will fit that pot. That's my, that's my, that's my big trick. So apparently, it's gonna be something. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna give this a stir just once or twice. Um, find a lid that will cover that up, and I'll keep it covered for about half of the time that it's cooking. I want it to steam and keep the heat in there, but I also want to get a little color on the outside of our squash. All right, I'll meet you back here in 15 minutes. All right, so we had 10 minutes with a lid on it, and then I uncovered it for four or five minutes, and I tasted it, and I did salt it twice. <laughs> but that's okay, because I went really lightly both times. So let's give it a quick taste. Make sure we're cooked all the way through. That's a tiny piece, that's not gonna tell us anything. My excuse to eat one. Wow, that's good. All right, you can tell by the way it went right through with the fork times. You see what I did? See how easy? Boom, it just went right in. You know it's cooked. All right, so at this point, right in with our sage. I'm gonna save just a little tiny bit over here to put on the top because it's pretty. And then we're coming right in with our garlic and toasted red pepper flakes right in there with our toasted almonds. And we're gonna get every last drop of that brown butter. Because the flavor is stupendous. So we're in under 20 minutes, y'all, which is pretty daggone good. And if you're cooking for more people, this recipe just scales right on up. And if you're cooking for just yourself or one person, that's just about perfect right there. All right, let me get a dish. A towel. It smells like 
a holiday. What movie is that? Rain Man. She looks like a holiday. <laughs> I don't need it. I need to show you that movie. It's the best movie. Dustin Hoffman in that movie was a genius. Tom Cruise is pretty good too, but Dustin Hoffman? Oh my gosh. Every last little delicious speck of goodness. How do we I'm talking about food to movie actors? Because that's how my brain works. <laughs> Sometimes it just jumps around. <laughs> that, y'all. It's the best sauteed squash you will ever eat. And rich, delicious, satisfying, all the things. And this one's mine.